Hey, welcome back. The first chapter of 2 Corinthians has a lot to think about. So let's recap. Here we have a church that Paul set up in Corinth that is fighting and struggling and they have they have people that are extremely sinful that are uh, and and people the leadership is is confused they don't know what to do and and there's there's really inconsideration um for example with communion they they um, would have a big party but only certain people were invited to this communion party where they would share bread and wine and and gather and so there's a lot of fighting in the church and and if you've been involved in a church, you know that, that it's easy for churches to um, be sinful, to be human, and, and have the humanness come out and, in a way that's not so friendly and that you sometimes don't even want to be a part of. Um, and that's what was going on here in this church. And they're looking for a leader. They're looking for someone to take, take guidance and show them what to do. And that's what Paul uh, will do for them. So Paul said, I'll come back. And he kept in touch with them with his letters. But he said, I'll come back. But then he wasn't able to come back. He got tied up in Asia. So um, there's, there's uh, I guess, mistrust in Paul. And again, when we humans occasionally let us down. And, and that's just part of life, isn't it? I mean, um, when your boss says you have to work late, when there was a f car accident, when, you know, things happen so that you can't always do what you said you would do. Um, so the, that's when Paul gets into in, in the, the uh, writing of this letter, and he talks about yes and no. I mean, can I, is my promise really good? Is it, uh, yes, I'll come, but then I don't come? And he, he eventually did come back to Corinth. Um, so he did keep his word. Uh, but, but there was that in-between time that they're really struggling with. And, and that, at that point, Paul um, had passion for them and, and longed to be there. And he wanted to be there. It wasn't that he was deliberately trying to hurt the church. So in Paul's letters, he told the church, you must be strong. You must stand up against sin. You must stand up for the theology that Paul taught them, the understanding of God and, and how forgiveness works and what Christ was about and, and all, of this, all this understanding which comes to us through God in the Holy Spirit. And Paul was, was teaching. He was a teacher and he tried to get them to understand the same things that our pastors try to get us to understand today and Christian leaders also. This, this sense of who is God and how does he work in our lives? And, um, and how does he work? There's a lot to understand. And that's why Christian education is so important. And being a part of a church is so important because that's the best place to get it. The bottom line is we're sinful, each of us. And that sin makes it hard to live together sometimes and to work together sometimes. And we're not always loving and kind and the church is the same way because the church is really people. And so really that's what this letter is getting about. So there's a lot of lines we can pull from here that relate to our lives. Um, lines that really come down to the self and, and how the self cares for itself and, and how God intervenes with that and helps. Um, there's two lines in this uh, chapter that really stood out to me. The first one was, strangely enough, the greeting. Um, Paul says this in, in most of his letters. He'll open with a greeting. But um, when I read it, I, I took a step back and, and thought about what it meant. Grace and peace to you. As it says, let me read it for you. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, typically when when uh, people read Paul's openings to his letters, his greetings. They whip right through it. It's, it's kind of like, uh, dear Mary, dear Sue, dear John, dear, you know, hi, Bill. You know, it's like you just go right through it real fast. But in this case, Paul packs a lot more than just a hi or a hello. He is saying grace and peace to you from God. Now, that's a big difference. And the difference is this, God's peace surpasses all understanding. God's peace is more than not war. 
even though that's part of it. But it's more than that. It's for you personally. It's for your wellness. It's for your wholeness. It's for your spirit. It's for your well-being. It's for your salvation. See, there's, there's three things that Christ overcame when he died on the cross for you. Sin, death, and the devil. Uh, we're each sinful, um, as we've been talking about. And, and I'm sinful just as you are. And it, it shows itself daily, unfortunately. Um, and if you don't think you're sinful, you're wrong. And, and you need to take an honest look at yourself and compare it through what Scripture says we are to be. And when you do that, when you use Scripture as your guide and not the world and what the world says, but when you look at Scripture, its, it's expectation of us makes it clear that we don't keep the expectations that God has set forth for us. So we're in a quandary. And because we haven't kept those expectations— we will face judgment. Just think of it like a court of law today. You can't go before the judge and say, I know I stole that car, but I've been a good person. The judge is just going to probably laugh you into prison and say, well, that's nice that you're a good person, but you did steal that car, and the punishment for stealing that car is this. Now, in... In the theological sense, or an understanding of, of how God works sense, and that's what theology means, just an understanding of how God works. In a theological sense, you are guilty of sin. And because of that guilt, we experience death, and we have trouble in our life, lots of trouble in our life. Sometimes because of bad choices, sometimes just because of our sinfulness and what we've done and what we haven't done. The penalty of sin is hell and death. But God, who cares about you so much more than you will ever imagine, he would not let that be the final word. He figured out a way to pay for the sin because the sin did have to have payment. Your sin does, and so does mine. And that payment was paid through Jesus Christ and his suffering and his death. And that death of Christ is yours. And when I tell you it's yours, that is what's called proclamation. So I'm proclaiming to you that Christ has done something. And that's God's promise. And you see, the difference between human promises and God's promises are quite different. God's promise, he keeps. He will always keep. So when he promises to have forgiven your sins through Jesus Christ, it's true. And you can believe it. And in that believing, it takes effect. So it's already done for you. Christ has died for you. And that is the beauty of Christianity. Through Christ's death, your sins are forgiven. Now, the second verse that I really like in here, let me read it for you. I'm going to read the line before the actual line I'm considering so you can have a better idea of, of what's included. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of mercies and God of all comfort. The Father of mercies and God of all comfort. That's a promise from God. Mercy and comfort. Who comforts us in all our afflictions. That is powerful to me. Every trouble we have, every affliction we have, God is there in the midst of it. So God comforts us in all our afflictions so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. This, to me, is extremely powerful. Let's unpack it. Paul is telling us that God cares about you incredibly and deeply, and he knows your life, and he is active in your life. 
And the things that, that are good in your life that are helpful, the people that are helpful and good, are not accidents. All that is good is from God. And so these good things that happen to help you along, to make you strong, to make you uh, endure, um, to get you through those tough times, those illnesses, those things are from God. One way I like to think of it is, um, is as a cup. And, and our souls are like cups. And um, they're empty. And they, they get filled with the Holy Spirit and with God and his love and his passion and his promises and in his help and his, and his wisdom. And in all this stuff, it fills our cup and our soul gets full. And we realize that, that it's God we lean to and it's God we trust in and it's God we go to when we have trouble. And, and the more you realize that, the more your cup is full. And, and your cup gets filled up with hearing the word, and that's the Bible. And so reading the Bible is so important and helpful in filling up your cup. And also going to a church and attending a church and being involved in a church because the word of God is there and God's people are there. And yes, there are going to be fights and there's going to be sin and there's going to be trouble, but there's also goodness and love and kindness and the word of God. And that is really important and powerful. So that's why church is so important. And that church experience helps to fill up your cup and fill your soul. Small groups also do the same thing. And friends and family that are Christians that's, that, that bring you a word of God and love like Christ would love. All of these things help to fill up your cup. And what happens is when your cup fills up and overflows, and then, then you become like Christ to other people then you become kinder and gentler and more loving. You're still going to be a sinner. You're still going to make mistakes. But this is what this verse is getting at. It's like fill yourself up with Christ and then overflow and be like Christ. And in that action, love is produced. And that is love. To be like Christ because Christ was love. So my line is, I think, going to be the second line. The one that says, it starts with the word who, but it means God or Christ or Jesus or the Holy Spirit, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we'll be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. We com are comforted by God, and with that we comfort others. And that's the, the verse I'm going to focus on for my painting. You may have found a different verse, and that's fine. I'm excited to see what you do with it. But the first step that we have right here now is to pull out that one part, that one area, that one verse, that one, even a couple words, something that speaks to you. The thing that spoke to me was the comfort, that God comforts us and we comfort others. Thank you for following. The next part we're going to look at how we take this verse now and let's Let's zero in on it a little more and let's, let's look at how it impacted the people in the story in, in historical times at Corinth, how it impacts us today, and then let's come up with a story and the, more of the, with that combination of, of true meaning for the Corinth people and true meaning for us today. And let's come up with a story. And this is where we start to get creative. So that's the next part. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next video.